A PNP is a pediatric nurse practitioner. We can diagnose, treat, prescribe, just like a doctor would, but with the touch of a nurse. Kids A to C with the PNPs. A is for asthma. Hi everyone, welcome to Kids A to Z with the PMPs. Where each week we take a closer look at some of the common health problems affecting our children. We're your hosts, Courtney. And I'm Dominique. So today we're going to talk about A. A. And A is for asthma. asthma. So asthma is one of the most common diagnoses that we see here at Children's Hospital of Michigan. Asthma affects about 7 million kids in the United States and about just under 15% of kids in the city of Detroit. So it's, uh, like I said, one of the most common diagnoses that we see and treat um, here at the hospital, and it's really uh, pretty prevalent in the city of Detroit. So we thought it was a good topic to brush on today. It's a huge topic, so we're gonna try to condense it to uh, the bread and butter of it. Asthma is a chronic disease of the airway. So really there's three components to asthma. Um, it's hyperreactivity of the lungs, where uh, your child's lungs may be more sensitive to allergens in the air, um, and therefore they produce extra mucus, which kind of plug, plugs those small airways. Um, and then there's also inflammation, which is basically swelling in those small airways of the lungs. So I like to, when I paint a picture of asthma for my patients, or when I think about a kid that's struggling with asthma, I imagine like this becoming your airway. We're used to breathing in and out of our nose and mouth, but someone with asthma, if you were to breathe just through this straw, plug your nose, and the amount of air that you're getting in is that little compared to when your lungs are, are healthy. So it can be pretty scary if you yeah, imagine scary. not being able to take deep breaths. And there are several different ways, uh, methods of treating asthma, most of which are with bronchodilators, it'd be albuterol, venolin that you may have heard of before, that's your rescue inhaler. But we're gonna try to veer away from treatment and talk a little bit more about prevention and what you can do at home to help prevent your child um, from coming to the hospital. So one of the biggest things for prevention is knowing what triggers your child's asthma. Um, so identifying those triggers and, and trying to avoid them. So a big trigger for asthma is one, the, the environment, which is hard to control. Um, but just taking note, does your child's asthma flare in the winter versus the summer months? Um, is there dust in the house? So dusting your house on a regular basis, vacuuming frequently, um, and getting rid of carpet if, if possible. Yep, and um, mold, um, cockroaches actually can be a big trigger for kids. Um, which we don't like to talk about, but it happens. Um, so, and every child is very individual. So what, what, what affects one child might not affect another. Um, family history is certainly a huge risk factor for asthma. If, you're, uh, if, if a child's parents have asthma or there's a family history somewhere, or um, eczema and seasonal allergies tend to go hand in hand with asthma. Um, some other things that you can do um, to prevent are obviously the strong smells. So cleaning, detergent, smoking is a big one. So smoking in your house, it stays in the fabrics around your house, it stays in your clothes. So avoiding smoking if your child has asthma um, or if you must smoke outside, washing your hands and always changing your clothes. Yeah, there's this big push lately about third hand smoke. We talk a lot about second hand smoke or your child breathing in the smoky air around you. But third hand smoke is actually when, um, even if you are smoking outside, if that smoke stays on your clothes and then your children are close to your clothes, it can still affect them. So um, if you must smoke, again, wash your hands, change your clothes, have a designated smoking jacket, um, or just don't smoke, because it's not a good idea. So there is obviously some you know, medications that we'll, we'll touch on because I think they are, are important. Sure. Um, you do have your what we call your rescue inhalers that work right away to help stop the symptoms um, when you're having or when your child's having an asthma attack. And then there's also what we call a controller medication. And the idea of a controller medication is to prevent asthma symptoms from occurring. Um, and controller medications are medicines that you should take your child should take every day, most of the time twice a day, to help prevent your child from having asthma symptoms. So the idea of the controller medication is to help uh, keep them from using their rescue medication too often to keep uh, their symptoms under control. So some symptoms of poorly controlled asthma are um, using your albuterol inhaler too frequently. Um, also, nighttime cough. If your child's waking up a lot at night coughing for no obvious reason and they're not sick, that can be a sign of poorly controlled asthma. Other signs are kids, should, kids with asthma should be able to keep up with kids their own age. So 
Just because they have asthma doesn't mean they can't be playing uh, and running around with other kids. So they should be able to keep up with kids. And if not, they're getting winded or out of breath or having wheezing. Those are signs of uh, poorly controlled asthma. And we often hear parents um, talk about limiting their kids' activity because of their asthma. Um, they don't let them play sports. They don't let them run outside when the weather is, you know, really get too hot or too cold. We really don't want kids to be limited by their asthma and what they can do. We want them to play. We want them to have fun. We want them to be normal kids. Um, and if you you uh, would like to see one of our allergists, we have an amazing allergy immunology team here. Um, our allergists are our asthma specialists, so feel free to give us a call. I'm hoping we can provide a link below um, where um, people can call to make an appointment uh, to see one of our specialists. So I think that about covers asthma. It's a huge topic. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment or shoot us an email and we'll be happy to try to answer them. Um, but we're going to wrap it up and next week we're going to talk about B. Yeah, which is for burns. B for burns and burn prevention. So we're really looking forward to it. See you next week. See you next time. Thanks for watching.